Hey Armature 9 subscribers, I thought it was time for me to do a follow-up video on the topic of artificial intelligence. I posted a video in January, which I will link to in the description, just putting out a call for just kind of touching base and seeing how people are feeling about uh, the technology and expressing just some genuine feelings that I've been having and wondering if other people out there were feeling the same way. And I got a variety of responses that just sort of spanned the gamut and I didn't get sort of a overwhelming feeling that that uh, there was this general sense of of anxiety out there except for maybe by one or two people and um, however I, I still part of me still thinks that that feeling is is out there or perhaps um, it was there at the time and maybe people are feeling more at ease now I don't know but uh, um, if you haven't seen the video take a look at it and leave a comment let me know what you what your thoughts are on what I share in that video one of the comments um, brought up the topic of um, copyright infringement and that is a, a very important point to to bring up uh, many of these convolutional neural networks and these are the neural networks that essentially specialize in creating visuals whether it's video uh, images uh, illustrations things like that have been able to develop by essentially freely appropriating other people's work They've scraped the web of other people's artwork and trained <laughs> the, uh, the networks, which I believe is a rather deceptive term, which kind of attempts to, I guess, anthropomorphize the technology. But the technology is anything but human. There is nothing um, human-like about the technology, and they call these little nodes neurons but they're not really neurons it's another term that is being used to make it seem like they've created a synthetic brain um, what they've created uh, I've done quite a bit of research on it and I've started to build my own neural networks in fact because I really just want to understand it and I would love to I think the technology is brilliant so I think the it's it must have been an incredible eureka moment when when they came up with this stuff because it's so incredibly simple and elegant it makes you wonder why we didn't come up with this sooner but essentially it's a form from what i have been able to understand it's a form of abstracted storage so when they say they're training a network what they're actually saying is we're storing information in abstracted form and it's abstracted from the standpoint of meaning so you can take one of the things you have to do when you train a neural network is you have to prepare your content that you're gonna feed into the system and preparing the content essentially means number one formatting it in a certain way but also uh, tagging it and fragmenting it in such a way that the content you're providing comes associated along with it meaning and and so what ends up happening is all these things they call neurons which are essentially just little little nodes that um, take an input and pipe it through to another neuron at another layer and whatever neuron it hits that one uh, sends it over to another neuron down the chain and what you're trying to do is train the direction that that information gets piped through which is called a bias and as you uh, training essentially means that you're inputting all of this data and you want it to reach the other end in a way that is consistent with the way it came in so let's say you, you feed in a number an image of a number nine on the other end you want the thing to result is in another number nine 
And so essentially you're trying to create a system where all of these nodes, thousands of them, are arranged and biased in such a way that they can retain an enormous amount of information, but it's all abstracted in thousands and thousands of, of layers. And so they just pipe and pipe and pipe and pipe data in it, and all of these layers end up getting trained, essentially what they call being trained. But really what you're doing is you're just storing uh, the biases of each of those neurons in a way that results in the result you want. And so it's really abstracted storage. It's a form of abstracted storage. Um, it's, you know, when, when property rights and intellectual property rights state that if you create a work and you publish it in a tangible form, it is copyrighted by default, at least in the United States. And um, if I go online and I find an image and I right click on it and copy it and paste it and I publish something uh, for commercial purposes, uh, I've infringed on that person's copyright unless I got permission to use their work. And the argument that the uh, artificial intelligence people are making is no, we're not copying the work. Uh, we're training uh, on the work. But training is essentially, it would be like me saying, uh, no, I didn't right click and copy their artwork. I copied an array of pixels that were on a website somewhere and those pixels I'm putting in my document, but those pixels, that's not their artwork. It's just the pixels, I just copied the pixels. Um, but imagine neural network taking that to a further level of abstraction where they're not copying the pixels in one layer, they're taking all of the pixels of information from that image and they're abstracting it and splitting it up into multiple layers of meaning and significance so that you essentially obscure the storage of that information so that it doesn't seem like it's actually been copied but it really it has and this is something that really bothers me um, at, at the very beginning to be to be honest when i uh, learned about neural networks um, i was not bothered because i didn't understand it i didn't understand how all of this worked but um, uh, since then because I was so enthusiastic about the technology, I, I really dove in and started to learn more about it and read about it. And now I'm trying to see if I can build my own. Um, and then the, the more I understood, the more pissed I got, you know, and the more upset I got at how these companies have freely just appropriated um, a, an enormous amount of intellectual property, which, in my opinion, is an infringement on property rights and copyright law. And in fact, I, you don't need to create any new laws to regulate this. It's like just enforce the laws that we already have. And so I'm uh, very much of the opinion that while this technology is exciting and powerful and great, it shouldn't be developed by infringing on intellectual property rights. And it's, uh, it's something that uh, it frankly shocks me that this even has to be said and that the fact that I even have to say it gives me little hope that much will be done to address it um, and so it's a it's kind of a tra to me it's kind of a tragic moment in our history as a species because it signals the abandonment of property rights it's it, it seems like it's signaling the beginning of the erosion of something that has been sort of fundamental to civilization as a whole. Not just Western civilization, just the idea of human civilization and how we've developed it up to this point by honoring such a thing as property or intellectual property. And um, so, yeah, I very much agree with um, that commenter that said that this is, you know, it was something to the effect of, I have no interest in, in engaging in a conversation about AI until we solve this, this issue. And uh, I can certainly uh, empathize with that point of view. Um, 
Now, like I mentioned in the last video on the bright side, at least for me, it's had a, it's had kind of a liberating effect. You know, um, I've devoted, and I mentioned in the last one, I had devoted a lot of time over the course of the last, really most, my entire, ever since I started drawing as a little kid, ever since I started coloring and getting better at drawing, I was always drawing uh, because I was inspired by maybe video games or movies um, and uh, TV series. and I was always aspiring to participate in industry, and in particular in, in science fiction and fantasy and uh, all of these genres that inspired me as a kid. And, and they, they became a big part of what motivated me to learn how to make artwork. And all the way through my even adult years, just the past uh, five years, I was still trying to develop my skills in the art of creating fantasy illustration, illustration for fantasy, um, whether it was for, could have been for book covers or comic books or just concept art for films and games. I was developing, continuing to develop that skill. And what the advent of these neural networks has done for me, for my own psychology, has made me suddenly kind of devalue um, honing my skill, my skills for the sake of commercializing myself as an artist. Because these networks have essentially uh, trained themselves to be experts at exactly the kind of art that I was trying to get good at making. And, and once that happened, I found myself remembering that there was some fine art, fine art, digital fine art that I was exploring decades ago. And uh, all of a sudden I was just rushed with inspiration to go back to that and continue to explore some ideas that I was doing back back then purely because I was just excited about doing art, art with a capital A, you know, like actual um, something that is pushing uh, the boundary further. And so that's why I mentioned in the last video that there's it might have a liberating effect in that sense, in that artists will for the first time feel um, the desire to pursue something that might actually be more fulfilling um, at a more spiritual, personal level. And so that's, that's kind of what's been happening for me. Uh, I've, I've lost a lot of my enthusiasm for the more main, mainstream commercial style of art uh, that I was pursuing. And so, yeah, that, that was kind of an interesting silver lining. Now, the weird <laughs> paradox here is that I've completed these really beautiful pieces now, just in the last uh, few months, but I don't want to share them, <laughs> you know? I don't want to post them online because what's to say they won't just get tractor beamed into some neural network somewhere and subsumed by some abstracted storage device and so that leaves me with this weird dilemma of like oh gosh I feel really inspired to do this artwork that is completely innovative and unlike anything anybody has ever seen but completely hesitant to share it at least on the internet. Um, right now what I'm thinking is the the artwork is is uh, uses 16-bit color so it's it's more color than what a, a computer monitor could even display and so I would have to figure out a different way in which to actually present the work so that you could actually see everything that's there 
And so I, at this moment in time, I'm thinking, well, I'm just going to have to keep all of this stuff privately to myself until uh, I have a venue or perhaps a, uh, produce a book uh, where I could actually have the work presented in that format and people could, could buy it or come to, to the art show to actually see it. So, yeah, it's a weird, weird place to be. I'm curious if anybody else out there has been feeling that way, that they're, they are inspired to do art, but hesitant to share it, hesitant to publish it or to show it. Um, I have, uh, if I were to make art with AI, um, then I would feel no hesitance to share it and publish it because it's, I have no personal attachment to what was created there because it came so easily and uh, leveraged these tools. I just remembered I was actually experimenting with some of the video AI stuff that's out there. I think it was Runway I was using. And in one of the thumbnails that it produced for me to give me a preview of what I was going to be seeing, I could see kind of a, a garbled up iStock logo in, in the image. Um, and this, this happened like um, a few weeks ago, which, I mean, that's a great example of what I was talking about earlier, that these tools are essentially just crawling the web and just scraping stuff. They're probably focusing on not the random artist website out there. They're going to repositories of high quality work so that they're not training on on everything. They're training on like, I don't know, the iStock library. Maybe they're probably going to ArtStation and finding the highest, most popular websites and scraping those. Um, so uh, chances are like a random, you know, artist is, is not getting uh, their stuff seen, but it definitely dissuades. I could see how it would dissuade an artist from even wanting to succeed or become popular because popularity almost means you're going to get punished for it. Although, to be fair, that was kind of already happening, even before AI, right? I mean, we saw a lot of people that would just rip people's art off and start selling prints on some random website somewhere. I even had acquaintances of mine, fairly well-known artists, who, who had this happen to them many years ago. And so the internet already kind of became this wild west terrain where you just couldn't you couldn't trust that the rules were going to be followed and so an AI of course just aggravates that uh, even further so yeah I'm th these are kind of the things that have been going through my mind um, it's w one of the things that I feel like I've lost as a digital artist is you know I used to be able to um, early on when I first started with digital art I would uh, I would tell people oh I painted this in the computer I did it digitally people didn't know how what went into that and they would just assume the computer did it <laughs> for me you know but I come from the, the generation of digital artists that had a traditional art experience and even modern day digital, digital artists, the ones who are really serious, go through traditional art training and then because all that stuff you can translate it directly into the digital environment. And, uh, but now when I say I did a digital painting, it's, it's a legitimate perception what used to be a misperception is now a legitimate perception. Now you can, now people can legitimately perceive that, oh, the computer painted it for you is what you mean. And uh, whereas before I could actually defend the artistry that went behind creating a, a digital painting, whereas now there's no way to know whether much artistry went into it at all. And so I feel like we almost need a new new language so that we can explain truly what that really is when you go in and you grab a stylus and you you pick colors and you and you 
essentially move the stylus and draw and paint and blend um, is digital is to say that that's a digital painting enough to convey the skill that was involved in training yourself to be good enough to do that uh, and the effort that would go into to building that image out sometimes you know for someone like me who's who's fairly busy I was doing these digital paintings just for fun just to develop my own skill over the course of many months just taking a little bite out of it here and there and just continuing to iterate on it and it could take months before I finished an image um, I feel like we need a new a new term, new language to describe that art, what that is. Are we going to call it traditional digital art or something? Um, because I feel like saying digital art now is not enough to explain what what really is going on um, when when you do something like that. You put in that kind of effort and training into into your work so those are some of the thoughts I've been having I'm curious how you've been feeling since the, the last video have, have you been seeing any adverse effects uh, from AI uh, do you, what is your sense of what's gonna happen um, I would love to hear your thoughts uh, am I delusional you know to think that we've lost something here uh, or are my concerns legitimate um, I am by no means an expert in neural networks so the descriptions I gave you are very very uh, simplified versions of what the technology does I'm sure because I'm still learning but from what I've been able to gather it's it definitely seems to me it's a form of abstracted storage. Um, they're not neurons, you're not training anything, you're just storing information in an abstracted form uh, with abstracted through meaning uh, rather than abstracted through XY coordinates of a, of a pixel like a raster graphic image. Um, so, curious what you guys think of these thoughts. Um, I would love to continue this conversation. Uh, one of the topics I want to bring up eventually is uh, how to use this technology. What are some ways that we can use this technology? I've had all kinds of ideas of ways in which um, the armature could dovetail really nicely with AI, but in doing so I want to make sure that, that it's done ethically and we're not infringing on people's rights. So there's an element of waiting and seeing what's gonna happen in the next few months, perhaps the rest of the year, who knows, and uh, seeing what, what comes out of all of these lawsuits that are going on right now. So I think I've ranted long enough. Let me know what you think in the comments. Thank you for watching, and thanks for being here. Bye.